Support for Let Me Book the Territory is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in man's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package, the ultimate man hygiene bundle. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code TERRITORY at manscaped.com. And if my math is right, that's about 14 million balls. Dang, that's a, that's lot, a lot of lot balls, of A-Dub. Uh, you got to get 20% off and free shipping with the code TERRITORY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code TERRITORY. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. For the- what in God's name is going on in here? What was that ruckus? Uh, what ruckus? I was just in my office and I heard a ruckus. Could you describe the ruckus, sir? Okay, here's what I would have done. Bro, no one cares what you would have done. Actually, everyone cares. Welcome to Let Me Book the Territory, the podcast made for smart marks and nostalgia nerds. Brought to you by the Embrace the Turnup Podcast Network. And now your hosts, A-Dub. E-B-A. E-Ray and J-Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the greatest professional wrestling podcast of all time. Not only the greatest, the most influential wrestling podcast of all time. We have learned that our influence cannot be denied on the world of professional wrestling. This is Let Me Book the Territory. I am the pod god, your pod tribal chief, the homie, A-Dub in the building. And joining me as always is my brother in the NWO Wolfpack. I'm talking about BAP history. I'm talking about BA DiBiase, Quantum Leaping all through the timeline. BA is in the building. What's popping, BA? We the ones, our tribal pod chief. We the ones. And now my Wolfpack brother, and since we both put on the same shirt without even collaborating about that, so I'm gonna too sweet you because I see didn't, you. Didn't talk at all yes, about sir. it. Ooh. Yes, sir. But yes, BA DiBiase, Black IRS. The Twitter guy, if you, if you will, uh, BA is in the building. Um, just, just getting ready to talk some full gear? Question mark? Shrug shoulders? <laughs> but we'll see. But no, nah, BA's here. Dot dot dot. Quad- <laughs> dot quantum leap it, and uh, yeah, man, here, get it in with the boys. Do it. And the third member of this illustrious podcast is the quasi bad guy, the Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> Of all things pod, breaking guitars over everybody's back. E-Ray is in the building. What's up? That is right. The quasi bad guy, the Diet Coke of evil, Big Stick Williams out here. And yes, I am considered the Jeff Jarrett of the pod because I'm all over. You never know what place you're going to find me in. And I will slap you over the head with a woodwind or string instrument you slap nuts <laughs> boom how about boom. that love it love it gentlemen where do we want to start with this another crazy week in professional wrestling talk to me i mean let me talk to you uh let's probably start with uh the beginning of the week man raw monday night raw so a few things happened that I really wanted to take note of. Um, the first thing for me that I thought was really interesting about Monday Night Raw that we really got to hop into is, I guess, a new theory, if you will, a rebirth of Austin Theory. He's just he just unhinged, angry man now. The the burial is complete, and then this is him rising from the grave. 
the the beard tells it all. Oh yeah. The, Every time somebody gets a beard, it's it's the the oldest trope in the book. If you go look at like old episodes of Star Wars or Star Trek, it's like, oh my gosh, that person's the evil version. All they have is a goatee. Nope. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing else about them that's evil. Hey guys, I'm just getting some coffee. Kill that motherfucker. He got a goatee. You see that so. beard? He's got to be evil. Right, he's yes. so evil. To the point, E-Ray, I'm going to piggyback on that, up. that if in, there's a certain radio show host in in the city of Cleveland, no names please, shout out to if y'all know who that is, will tell you that when he worked in news, that people were not allowed to grow facial hair because people would think watching them that they're mean and bad people. So yes, that is very true, E-Ray. Damn, so he should never go to Philadelphia. <laughs> 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 Philadelphia freeway. Um, yeah, so love that. Um, I, I definitely think that there was something there that we were missing uh, from the, the new theory. And I like Austin Theory a lot. He's shown a lot of growth in character. He's shown a lot of versatility. He's been funny. He's been uh, like unhinged. He's been a follower. And he's been like really dumb. He's been like the golden child. And now unhinged theory is the next evolution of the character. And I'm, I'm all for it. Because again, it's always about what's next. Don't let your character get stale. People that got sick of just seeing them losing. They're like, what are you doing? You got the, the money in the bank and you lost it to the US title. <laughs> Ugh, disgusting. So yeah, I mean, I would be unhinged too if I, like, come on, come on, come on. That's all. That, that's all I got. Come, come on, on, man. Chris Carter. Come on, say. man. All right. So the yellowest eyes. In the game. <laughs> come on, so man. going forward with like with the new theory of just unhingedness, do you think, in theory, in theory, pun intended, once they have a world title on Raw, does he become a top level heel? Is he like a top level mid, a top mid card guy, or where is top he at on the mid. card? <laughs> not an oxymoron. Top of the mid, I was if you will. Say top level mid is like an oxymoron, but yes. Uh, <laughs> no, it's where it's where Dolph Ziggler had been no, for his entire career until recently. Like that man's in the back back of catering, but that's a whole nother podcast and discussion. But honestly, Dub, I see theory like putting in work in the mids. Key in point, the whole cash in and try to win the U.S. title to Ethan's disgust or E-Ray's disgust. He's a government name. Shame on VA. Um, but yes, um, <laughs> I completely agree so we do here. that by him doing that whole U.S. title and try to cash in, that he's kind of solidifying that he, you need to dominate this space first, pal, before you go up to the, the, the top ranks and try to battle with the, the Bobbies, the Romans, the more than likely Cody's and and Seth's here pretty soon. So, yeah, man. But, but wait, hear me out. I think by being unhinged, you literally can circumvent a lot of that stuff. Mm. So, you don't have to dominate or be anything special. By being unhinged and crazy, I don't know where you're going to show up. Make sure you're you can be anywhere. You can be doing anything. So when you go, let's say Cody appears, and then he's just like, I, I, I had enough. Yeah! And he just has a fucking full-on mental break and attacks Cody. Now he's in the top few with Cody. Or or Rome or whoever. That's what I like about the fact that he's like, I just had enough. And every time it seems to be, regardless of what your breaking point is, it seems to usually have a a great um uh, I, I guess a great outcome. Uh, again, unless you're the aforementioned Dolph Ziggler, who he he was unhinged, he cut his music, he would start imitating other people for some reason, and then he came out to no music, and then it was like, okay, what's happening? So, yeah, unless you're that, everybody else seems to have a really good unhinged run. So, speaking of unhinged, um, that seems to be a common theme going around Monday Night Raw because Bobby Lashley. That that's an angry black man right mm -hmm. now, and he's using it to beat up Mustafa Ali currently. But we all know where yeah. all roads uh, lead for that guy. Uh, I don't like that. 
<laughs> black on brown crime. <laughs> Unhinged, but black, e, old, e, scary black man. It's a black man beating up, up a on, police. I, on a brown policeman. It's so many different. It don't hit the same. Here, dude. Like, come on. <laughs> I, so they just wait for they look. That's if if Mustafa Ali just was like, put your hands up, and he just shoots them out of nowhere. Like he, he had a gun. I promise you. And we're like, we there's several thousand people in this crowd, Ali. We we seen you there. <laughs> Like and this starts becomes like a, a a courtroom procedural. I would not be surprised. That's what it feels like. But other than that, I don't like the 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 entrance or the injection of Mustafa Ali into the the Bobby Lashley beatdown feud because he's just like, shut up, little guy. I'm trying to do stuff. And Mustafa Ali's like the again the younger sibling who wants to play the game. I can play too. I can play too. And you just unplug the controller and just be beating the shit out of them and they thinking they win it. <laughs> so yeah. I I don't necessarily like that. I I loved when Mustafa Ali was kind of doing his own thing. But on the other hand, if this leads to some type of triple threat action between the three of them, those are at least two fantastic workers and Bobby Lashley. I'm with it. it it's a recipe for greatness. Do you think they like they offered this spot to guys in the back like, hey, we need a placeholder for, you know, when Brock's off for the holidays until the Rumble, but you're going to get beat up by Bobby Lashley for two months. And Mustafa Ali was like, I I need to get back on TV. I'm your guy. Give me some braids. <laughs> give me some... Uh, some boxing Kumite trunks. trunks. <laughs> I was like, give me some Kumite trunks. <laughs> Kumite. And I'm down. I mean, I'm... I like it. I again, like I said, I'm not mad at any of the things I'm seeing except for again the black on brown crime. Other than that, fine. Let let him have it cuz it's just basically like I think eventually he's going to get his come up cuz he's getting the shit throttled out of him by Bobby Lashley, which is which is fun to watch cuz Bobby will throw him up, but I think him and Seth could actually have some really amazing matches if they allow them to. Oh, for but sure. I, I, I just want to know where it's going. So in in that in that vein, let me ask you first, BA, where do you see this whole Bobby Ali slash Seth thing? Where how does it play out? Book that for me. Let me understand what's going uh, on. if I was Papa H and the agent producing this, I would probably go one of two ways the most obvious i would say would be um kind of have bobby and ali have like a number one contenders match quote unquote um to show who or see who would fight seth rollins um it not be a clean finish and they just make it a triple threat match um that's what i could see or that's probably what I want to see, I should say. I kind of combined my two ideas together because my second one was going to be the triple threat match, which I don't think they'll do. But I honestly believe that they'll probably just book this out like Bobby and Seth, but Ali kind of being like the the mosquito that won't stop buzzing around their heads and Bobby Lashley continuing to, as you guys put it, black on brown crime by throwing this man across the <laughs> arena like he ain't shit. So that's probably what we'll continue to see. But I would hope for some sort of triple threat match with those three would be very cool and different. All in the same ring at the same time doing their shit. So I would hope that that's where it goes. But I see the Bobby and Seth and Ali just trying to interject more than likely happen. Here, let me let me book it even further for you. That triple threat happens at the Rumble and Brock ends up costing Bobby that Ooh, match. Forgot about Brock. And Ali ends up winning. And Ali finally gets his comeuppance and gets the U.S. title, thus opening Seth to win the world title. You see? You see? You see? Dub, let, let me let me talk to <laughs> let you. Me talk let to me you. talk to you. On behalf of all our audience out here, NBA, that was a fantastic take. Even though you mispronounced the word comeuppance. <laughs> <laughs> I was Other about to say, that, where's the slight? It was really good, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. But almost. Words Thank you. are not Word, your, Words your are hard. Words are hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Put me over. Don't put me all the way over. Yeah, don't don't put oh, yeah. don't put me all the way over. Oh yeah, I can't I can't send you straight to the top. A la Austin Theory. You gotta you gotta take some hardship <laughs> first. Fine. But um, with with that said, the the thing that bothered me um about Monday Night Raw, I watched one of the worst promos ever, mm. and easily, easily. I was like, oh, I want to change. I want to change the channel, and I think I did. I don't think I watched any more of Raw <laughs> after this. Pro- like, what's what's happening? I, I don't like this. And I went to football, and it was the Commanders versus the Eagles. That tells you, I don't give up about either one of these teams, and I'd rather watch that shit than any more things that's going on after that promo. But the promo I'm talking about, if, in case anybody had any confusion, was the OC featuring me again. It was rough. It, it was it rough. Was, it was rough. It was clunky. It was awkward because they were just talking around her and she's just like sitting there with her like puff balls. Like, I, I, <laughs> I have gangster okay, in me too, guys. Look at my hair. <laughs> right, I, I, <laughs> I'm wearing flannel. Like, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> you gotta right. take me serious. Like watching that promo, like it was, it's hard for me to believe, believe like they ever even knew each other prior to last week. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and let alone throwing up the too sweet. I was like, this just feels yucky. It's I don't beyond like forced. It. So it, it just, yeah, it felt gross to me. And I was like, wait, what? I mean, I would honestly, I know this is going to be very, very uh, un- unlikable. This is an unpopular opinion here. And I don't know if this is uh, considered a, a bad take because it, it may be racially uh, wrong to say, but I, I got to say it. I think because it's just like they're two different type of cultures. Like me and Yim kind of has like that California street energy mm-hmm. of like where uh, the young Hispanics, young uh, Asian melting pot, black everything is kind of right in that vein right the oc strikes me as like that funny random biker gang good old boys club type deal and if you want to bring a woman into that and you don't actually work hard to mesh and kind of play with the dynamic and go okay well if either she makes fun of them or they kind of make fun of or something like that where it kind of feels like a meshing then you end up with what we're seeing i would say they needed somebody much more like I don't know at, at well, Lacey Evans Lacey Evans being oh. so white mm. and so yeah, nasty oh. it would mesh a lot easier with that biker gang she looks like somebody's old lady that's exactly what she be. Like, I'm his old lady I'm not a sweet butt <laughs> and like uh, if you watch Sons of Anarchy you know exactly what I'm talking about she could be Gemma she could be any of that type of character. Put her on some leather. She throw up the too sweet. I mean, it would be a lot less force than the Mia Yim thing. Even though Mia Yim can go, Mia Yim can wrestle. It just feels like a disconnect. And I, it's like they've never had a conversation together, which is very hard to overcome. And that's what I'm trying to get over. Please, please, by all means, shit on that. But hear me out for what I'm saying first and not just looking at the Lacey Evans that y'all hate. That, that that's hard to yeah, do. Yeah, right. that's um, hard. Man. Oh, I know. But that's what, that's <laughs> They'd what have saying. to do a whole lead up to her character I, change. I, I, I'm think... asking you as professionals to look beyond yourselves, because <laughs> that that uh, navy, fucking navy federal <laughs> gimmick, whatever she was doing, uh, USAA, <laughs> fucking bank account Gronk shit was not working. So, yeah, we need something a little bit different, and I think that her coming out being able to wrestle because she has that Liberty Bell uh, shout out to uh, glow wrestling type vibe and she can be all American but she also can be like I'm a little sassy I'm a little badass and that meshes a lot better with the OC that's all I'm saying because you already you got Rhea's already gone she's already down to the dark side which would have been the most natural fit for that so who's next what, what you gonna put in Naomi <laughs> <laughs> good <laughs> like, luck <laughs> Fucking uh, Aaliyah, 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 too sweet. 
like no i don't need any of that so that's what i mean i mean shotzi maybe but again we've already had our issues with shotzi and the other things going on so that was what i was thinking somebody who's not on tv currently that would been a more interesting fit for that without it feeling so weird because i felt uncomfortable enough to never watch it again so i did so first of all i hate lacey evans in this um and without like a complete rebrand a complete and utter rebrand like even down to the fucking name um but i think the mia yim thing can work because after her match the promo that kind of like after she was talking to damage control when they walked by with the beers and they were talking about, oh yeah, we got, you know, we got, got these beers on ice for you. Let's go drink. I'm like, that, that sounded more natural. That sounded like more like who they are. They didn't, they didn't sound them. good trying to put her over. I think if like you just play up more of the, Hey, we like to beat up people and drink beer. And Mia's like, yeah, I fuck with beer too. And they have to completely change her gear. 100%. She's not going to change her hair. The gear has to match. She should have came out. And like a leather, like a leather vest hoodie with the red, red and black bandana on. Yes. And Kendall All stick that, red that one. And her random blue. It felt like blood versus Chris. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is I'm the problem. That. As, as children so of the '90s gang it. wars, that was my problem. Like, if she wasn't gonna change her hair, she, the gear had to be like so dope and red. And then like she had to like really just look like oh she just she down for the get down. But. I, it just it feels like they're shoehorning her in instead of making her a part of the club. Like the thing about the NWO and the Bullet Club and everybody was that when you were in, what was the first thing they do? It gave you a fucking T-shirt. That is true. You you, you put on <laughs> what, what happened to that type of book? She needs the OC shirt. Like, Give yeah, like, something it, to match up. That yeah, it doesn't she does not feel a part of that crew at all? There's it. And, Triple and she didn't even games. she didn't even need it for the re debut when she just jumped Rhea. But that next week, oh, she needed to be in yeah. Full they should have had a ceremony like how NWO used to fucking take over the ring for thirty minute segments talking they shit. Let's do a quick one. Like, hey, we gotta coordinate our newest member of the OC. Come on out, Mia. And all she had have to do is just walk in and throw up the That's two sweet. It. And I would have been no like, promo. All right, Don't open this your mouth. What I predicted. Just show up. Don't say a fucking word. Oh, oh whoa. whoa. Okay. Wait a, wait a <laughs> second, guys. Just, just, hey. Yes, thank you, Doug. Silence Grab that all women. Right. Don't talk. Right. Don't, yeah. don't say any words. Uh, just walk in. Get do your out. job. B.A., we got, we got carried away. Whoa, B.A., we, you need to relax. We got carried penalty away box. there, B.A. We, oh, huh. Guys, we just reopened <laughs> the penalty box, and B.A. needs to take a step into it. Oh. I know. Get the cobwebs out, Jeez. B.A. You can go ahead and scrub bit. it up. Got to turn on the light switch. It's been a while. <laughs> But uh, see yes, yourself. I'll mute myself. I didn't have to let you know the the BA was here and, and never mind. I won't say that. Continue. <laughs> going to say something very inappropriate, but I'll, I'll go sit for a right. second. Yeah. BA senior mother, like what is this? <laughs> Clean our penalty box, sir. Um, yeah. So beside the sexism uh, <laughs> removed, that was a perfect proper way to introduce her she comes out less is more in this case you don't have to say a lot they throw up the too sweet she beat up so-and-so and they're gonna say now let's go get some beers and she said i can get down with that done easy. that's it easy less is more right but we didn't get that easy. and it felt like oh my gosh these old guys these old uh biker men are are like they've never put over a woman before. That's exactly what it sounded like. Without, without, uh, like sexualizing her or something. My hot Asian wife. And then like this might be her sister. <laughs> like, whoa, they could have, she could have even made it a step cooler. Like then like oh let's drink some beers. Me and Yim could have looked at them and said shots on me. And then and then the guys in the universe would have been like she's even cooler now, even fucking cooler. Because again, as we said, you have to mesh the worlds a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, even if they might, they do the beers, and she's like, nah, shots. Because again, that's more like shot o'clock, all the younger, more hip cultural things like that. So, again, better efforts. And I, I'm not going to completely shit on it, but in the future, that is something that I'm going to be looking forward to, or looking for, I should say, is them creating more of a meshing point for this because it it feels so unnatural 
And without them finding their footing, I don't think Mia Yim was the best promo in the first place. But relying on those guys to put her over and with their own brand, which they are funny, but they get each other. I don't think they get her per se, and that's what the kind of awkwardness is. But I'll give it I'll give it uh two more weeks. Yeah, and they they definitely gotta start traveling together to, to learn each other better and just kind of yeah. bounce off each off each other. Um, I feel like it could they give it yeah, some time. No. I feel like it could work. Like if you give them some organic time to kind of build that chemistry, like you said, be on the road together and stuff like that. Mm, yeah. BA, this is the Triple H era. We're giving everything time now. I, I'm about to say BA. <laughs> that, that's the that's the secret to everything. Fair enough. We're giving well, everything give it a time. chance. We tr- we trust work. Triple H. Um, you know what else I trust, guys? I trust my new trimmer from Manscaped. Oh, shit. I just got it in the mail last week. Let me tell you. The the light, the light at the end of this trimmer just shines so brightly. Um, it reduces the fear I got of, you know, nicking my family jewels before while, you know, I'm cleaning up down there. It's just, it's, oh, it's so beautiful. No, you don't want to hack saw no. your Jim Dung? Oh. Not, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> gotcha. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, right. as someone who's <laughs> in these streets, unlike you two, you know, I got to go out there with some confidence. And, you know, after using that the weed, not the weed whacker, the trim, yeah, it is, the, it is the weed whacker, right? No, the lawnmower. That's I'm sorry. the lawnmower. 4.0. Lawnmower. Yeah, using that lawnmower just to clean up everything down there. It's making me feel great. Um, that being said, guys, go to manscaped.com, use the code territory. You get 20% off and free worldwide shipping. Support the people who support us. Guys, I just wanted to toss that in there, but, you know, because they keep me smooth. The same way Stone Cold Steve Austin's head is smooth. And he's training for another match of Mania, guys. I, I, I'm seeing. I, I've seen him. Man, I was working out in the RV. You, you guys ready? In his, in his trailer. He's working doing, out everywhere uh, he goes. I love squats. it, man. It's motivating shit. Like, I love he, to see him. Like, when he's doing his squats, so he's like, right. hell yeah. To, like, hell let's yeah. groove tonight. Hell it was yeah. so, like, old school. I was right. like, it reminded me, like, some shit I see my right. dad doing. It was very, I was like, all right, I see you still. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Next video, he's going to be doing curls. Something about what? <laughs> what? What? Like, what? What? Yeah. What? I'm pretty sure he used the the twenty percent off code territory at Manscaped to get that smooth oh, yeah. head, and I don't even want to know what else is smooth on Stone Cold. <laughs> I don't want to know, but I'll let his wife and uh, whoever else decide that. But yeah, I'm I'm excited about it because guess what? Given a whole year to prepare, Stone Cold, and it's in Hollywood. Whew. Stone Cold, Stone, Stone, Cold. Cold. Stone, Stone Cold, Stone Cold. That is my childhood. I, I'm so excited. What, that, what, that what is, match do we want to see? Um, is it too late for him and John? Can I can I can I chime in no. on this one? You guys aren't gonna like this answer. Oh well, I'm getting. Oh no, no, this is for this is this is safe. <laughs> this is this you, is 2022 like woke culture, culture safe. Um, this. Okay. Oh well, now yeah, we're good. The, the, uh, <laughs> um, Stone Cold should not PC be wrestling a match at all. And here's why. Um, I would love to see him back. It was fun seeing him back last year. But the stuff with Ric Flair in that last match made me feel a whole different way about our heroes of childhood showing back up continuously wrestling. Because I don't want something to happen to Stone Cold. And we remember like, oh, damn, he shouldn't have been in the ring. That shouldn't have happened. Even though I know they'll be very safe and they'll make sure that nothing happens. It's just like, I don't want his legacy to be tarnished at all, man. That's why he left when he left. B.A., do you realize that Stone Cold is still younger today than Ric Flair was when he joined Evolution? I un- I understand that, <laughs> Dub. But also, nobody has a neck that's been, do like, you? bionically infused like Stone Cold has. Like, Stone Cold's, like, next to him is, like, half of you and, our- you and mine. Like, what? I-, I-, I, got- I, got- I got someone. Kurt Angle. Yeah, they keep each other safe for sure. A broken freaking neck, eighty-two thousand. No, not them together. That you said. Have you seen anybody's neck as mangled and fused That's what I'm saying. pieces? Like, what about Daniel Kurt Bryan? Angle, I mean, guys. Well, Daniel Bryan had co- mad concussions and stuff. That, that's a little bit different. He's gonna probably have CTE at one point in time. But, but. All, all hopes to him. He's doing everything to keep himself healthy. He's vegan, so it that does helps help. repair your brain. Vegan, po- vegan, vegan powers. Yes, vegan exactly. powers. Yeah. No inflammation in that yeah. body. His vegan powers will keep him safe 
No, no inflammation in the, even in his brain. His brain is like sharp as can be. That's why he hits the psycho knee. But on the other hand, Stone Cold, Kurt Angle, they worked. They had some decent matches. And I think Stone Cold is in much better shape and in much better places than a Kurt Angle even because Kurt Angle had his own issues, dark past with uh, ab uh, abusing substances and things of that nature. Vi vice versa, we were talking about uh, Ric Flair who is 422 years old. He is a living relic. And no, I don't want to see him do anything because I worry about Rick just breathing. He get up in the morning. Oh, I was like, oh gosh, what's happening to Rick? Stone Cold, on the other hand, True. he got it. You He's right. still in there. He kind of, And he quit his, you got to remember, Stone Cold's like actual run career-wise wasn't that right. long. Six years. Because like, the fears of what could happen. So he has... But that was back then. As as we've gotten better with technology, you seeing wrestlers come back. You seeing uh, they just cleared. I um, mean, we'll talk about it. A wrestler who has mm -hmm. some neck damage, uh, in another company that has now been 100 percent cleared. Daniel Bryan, we never thought he, we'd see him come back. Edge, Christian yeah. Edge, we never seen yeah. them come back. It's it's a plethora of people that because technology now, because more scientific methods are out there, we can do better. So here, Stone Cold I, is already getting his body together. I'm I, here for it, especially I with a good you. worker like a Kevin Owens or somebody who can really, who did the job for him and kept him so safe. This is this is a walk in the park. I, I got one for you, BA. And it and and doesn't itch. need to be like a match match, BA. I got one for you. Two. It's all spectacle. It's the match we never got. Don't you say, you gonna say Don't you say Vince McMahon. Goldberg. Oh. No. You, you're making it into a so spectacle. So he could be like Brett. So he could be like Brett the rest of his life. No, you make you it into the a worst spectacle. Been, this Goldberg's has been let me book the territory, spears. guys. B.A. signed it off after Austin's that. Austin's trying to I hit can't. stunners. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help you out, B.A. You don't want to say no. I don't need help. So just make it you know into something I don't need help. You know who you're not trying to help out? Stone Cold. So I was Steve gonna Austin. say, like, come on, man. Listen, can we do it? BA's been reaching out to to some folks here. Reach out to Bret Hart. <laughs> Let's get his take on what. Can you imagine that? Oh, I would have had a 55 year career if it wasn't for Goldberg. <laughs> no, he says his full name, Bill yes. Goldberg. Every time, hey, yo, Goldberg, son of a bitch, it's a Bill piece of Goldberg, shit. Right. unsafe motherfucker. Right. Right. <laughs> If it wasn't for the sweet nectar of my black wife, I'd never know the pleasures of, of a woman because I almost <laughs> Bill Goldberg. Oh, Fuck it for man. life. Yeah, I know. All of that. So, Ada, as I was just telling you before, uh, a, a bit ago, fantastic take. I'm reversing course. That was the worst <laughs> take you probably could have ever Why given are you us. trying to bring Saying Goldberg any move, back? Of all any people. move with Goldberg could ruin any I'd rather see especially I'd rather this see them bring Vince McMahon back out there and do the shit he did last year than to bring Goldberg I'd rather him I'd rather him bring Undertaker yes. back and do a, a weird spectacle match there because at least we know they're both generals yeah and they won't they're have workers, a, man. like you know I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind that. like a like a like a yeah. cinematic match for Undertaker and Stone Cold or you want them to actually wrestle uh, either or, because I, I trust them both, both to know what they're capable of. Yeah, and I it give would, you it, that. I, I I think it works, it, but I, I would rather have an in ring match because I think they can both. They've given the time, particularly Stone Cold, to let him just go out on on some great greatness. I think it'd be better to fight somebody who is not the Undertaker or somebody else's legacy. Just to give the rub to somebody new. Just How about Stone Cold and L.A. Knight? Yeah. Nope. Love yeah. It. There you go. You back on track. So <laughs> LA Knight yeah. talking about LA. And... Yeah. I mean, because of the get the let, gab let on lesson. those microphones. Could you I'll imagine LA Knight saying, Let me talk to you? And then Stone Cold saying, What? I said, Let me talk to you. What? Oh, yeah. Let what? me talk to you. What? Yes. Come yes. on. Yes. That that's just that's a money promo. Clip that low. They don't need to say no, shit by else. By the way. Um, but yes, um, that would be fucking great. Um, I can't even I can't even I have to take my whole like, take my get off my lawn, old man take away from that one because I, I would like to see L.A. Knight and Stone Cold just for the the promo hype up up till that. That would be fucking great. I can't even knock it. Support for Let Me Book the Territory is brought to you by Manscaped. 
who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped Performance Package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 7 million worldwide who trust Manscaped with the exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code TERRITORY at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 14 million balls. Damn! Damn. That's a lot of balls, E-Ray. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TERRITORY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code TERRITORY. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. But do you think guys will feel kind of slighted? Because, you know, like, wrestling those dudes is, like, kind of like holy grail shit in the locker room. And L.A. Knight, at least in the WWE sense, is kind of more of, like, the rookie, so to speak. Not career-wise, but tenure-wise. That'd probably get him some heat, would you say? Or would would you think so or no? I don't... I mean, with WrestleMania being, like, 95 days long now and... 115 hours. Nah, everybody just wants their spot. They want their spot. They want that hundred thousand dollar payday. Yeah, I respect it. They and, want your money. For and at this point, they're the... they're just happy the guys like Stone Cold and Rock are even there, honestly. Because like right. with Cause WrestleMania cause being so long, stuff. they're not worried about you know spots being taken. They're like, well, if you was gonna get on at this point, you was gonna. That's get a on. good point, Dub. Like the, nothing's the, being left off of, of WrestleMania. The heat is taken point. off with the fact that it's two day long event, basically. So. Essentially, as far yeah. as time, yeah, I got you there, but no. And, and let's keep it real. You don't even have to have like a real match between them. They could do a a promo off right then and there. So L.A. Knight just comes out, start talking his shit. He's like, "Let me talk to you." And all of a sudden, you hear that glass break, and he looks, and then they start talking shit back and forth. He throw him a beer, yeah, and he takes a drink, gets kicked, stunned, bam, we go home. That also works. I'm it's happy. so easy, it's so simple. We go. I'm not home mad at it. Well, I'll, 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 I'll wait before, like, like you said with, the, with the me and you and stuff. Two <laughs> weeks, you right. I will chill until I guess. No, no, two no. weeks. <laughs> WrestleMania. Ain't for I get a Stone Cold bill. Two, two weeks, weeks, and I'm not. I'm shitting on it if it doesn't happen anything. I mean, I don't see that. is about to quantum leap to WrestleMania. Yep. Going right to the future. I'm hopping in with Doc Brown. I'm going into DeLorean this time. You got hop in the future. You got to go to DeLorean. Speak, speaking of, speaking of, just out of curiosity, completely unrelated to wrestling. Have they canceled Quantum Leap yet? Nah, I don't think uh, so, e right. Anybody know? Anybody I don't check? Think so. I think that's coming back. It was it was popular. I think it's been reviewed. Quantum Leap. I mean, I know it got it got some pop and and. and I see yeah, myself. there you go. That's fine. But it's it's okay. I know some people watched it. <laughs> No names, please. But yes, some people watch. <laughs> oh man! Um, but um, not to to get us off course. Was there anything else from a raw perspective that we cared about, or can we go to uh, my my favorite show of the week? The best book show of all time, NXT. Damn, of all time. Yeah, we we had. Look- Hey, this is the hyperbole pass. Let's go. Hey, man. Hey, man. I calls them how's I see them. And as long as you see Bill Goldberg Ugh. anywhere, I don't trust your <laughs> eyes, man. Go get your glasses checked. You Stevie need a new wonder prescription. Wonder is yeah. his look, he do. Low key, I do. Oh, I can tell. I can tell. They were like, read line uh, seven, uh, row three. And you're like, B I L L W H O S N E X T. Oh, I can't believe you said that, Dub. That that was that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm honestly like. Let, let's let's wash the taste out of our mouths of of horrible booking by uh, talking about NXT and some really yeah, good. Yeah, some good shit happening on that um, show lately. I can't even knock it. Title Tuesday. Opened us up with BA's favorite guy, Von oh, Wagner, go. versus A Dub's <laughs> favorite guy, Bill Goldberg 2.0, <laughs> Braun, Braun Breaker. Uh, guys, what did you think about the match between Braun 
versus not brains. <laughs> I don't even know. What it's <laughs> like Neanderthal versus Neanderthal. Yes. Match was better than I thought it was going to be. I will say right? that much. Yeah. Um, I'll give it to him. And I will say that if this match closed out a pay-per-view, I would have believed at some point that Vaughn was going to win because he got in a lot of offense. But yeah. because it did open up a random Wednesday before Thanksgiving, I said, oh, there's no way this title's changing hands. At all. So I was like, so for what it was, not not too mad at it. Um. I'm just I'm just glad they got the Von Wagner challenge out of the way now, <laughs> so I'm, so we can get on to other well, things. I'm Wagner happier challenge. that they open the show with it. Just get it off my TV screen as soon as possible, please. And you've been hyping it up all over social media. Title Tuesday. Yes, I'm glad they got it out the way early. But to your point, Dub, it wasn't as get that shit off my TV. <laughs> It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, and I think that happened like, because it was a different Matt Braun match. Usually you see Braun with all that offense and spearing and slamming shit. And they're just trying to show. I think they're trying to have him work different dimensions of him to try to show him to make him a holistic champion. Look at me using work words. And uh, <laughs> Okay. Uh, Ooh, I see you right here. and uh von right. wagner like Holistic they, he needs like any work um shot. as far as offense and all that stuff so letting him get off on somebody that's a, a more established star at nxt i think it was kind of like they, they they like it it helped them both out somehow and you would have i wouldn't have thought that before i cut my tv on um so yeah it wasn't yeah, I agree. as terrible but i'm glad it got off my tv screen as soon as possible <laughs> It wasn't as terrible. <laughs> it wasn't no. horrific, but it, yeah. I also no, think I, he I, might be getting called up too because he's been wrestling matches on main event. And when I think when Brock and Bobby were like fighting each other, Vaughn Wagner was there as part of the pull apart crew as well. So I, it wouldn't shock me if they were just like, all right, well, there's not much else for you to really do here. And you're not going to get that much better. So just go on up. Yeah. So I think that could be happening as well. Like I said, I'm just happy they didn't stink up the joint, man. And and speaking of stinking up the joint, fellas, I don't know about y'all, but when Uh y'all kind of went to work, you showered Uh in the morning, you go to work, you come home, and me and E-Ray, I guess, can attest. When when Dub does have a, a lady to come home to, he can attest to as well. (laughs) <laughs> not to say like that's just which, the, which, which is like, very <laughs> seldom <way. Yeah. laughs> but it can get a little 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 tart down there a little 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 stanky tanky down there so our our oh, good no. friends that we partner with at manscape now make this stuff called ball deodorant i know that sounds crazy right y'all's probably like well so you talking about you put your fucking degree on your boss no guys i don't take my degree deodorant stick and put it down there um, I would not recommend it either. Well, women do it right. all the time. <laughs> they, they're like, "Oh, I gotta put some speed stick right. on these thighs." I was, I'm I was, because I gotta say, <laughs> I got the, I got the, um, I got the ball deodorant from them. Um, all the way through their performance package that they sell with all the other fun stuff that they give away. Um, the the lawnmower mm-hmm. 4.0 that like Dub was talking about earlier. So um, the ball deodorant, though, after using that lawnmower 4.0 and keeping your your guys fresh for the day not bad man i was because i was a little nervous trying to put some foreign substance down there after just (laughs) fully (laughs) burning the burning the bushes down so to speak and it's just a bare bare strip it just put that on there but i gotta say the the ball deodorant it's it's a nice little switch up fellas so so fellas out there do not be afraid to have fresh balls. I know it sounds crazy, but with all this talk of in the media with celebrities that don't like to take baths and wash their asses, which is crazy to me, don't be that celebrity. Be that guy with the fresh balls. Big and time. even more so, like my buddy Dub said, 20% off on the website. Free shipping. Fellas, holidays are coming up. Free Think shipping. about it. and to, For yourselves, of course. Or hook up your brothers, hook up your friends. Say, hey, man, it's not cool to have stinky balls. Go get this ball deodorant. 20% right. off with the cold territory, fellas. So check it out. I'm telling you, that ball deodorant is the truth. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming, because um, I had to bring it up. We were talking about a match not stinking it up and popped up on my brain. Like, let me let the world know about these their balls not having to stink and be like a stinky celebrity. So, yeah. 
Um, so with that being said, <laughs> the, the, no problem, fellas. It's here for it. Teach, reach one, teach one, right? Ball. <laughs> um, I mean, right. Speaking of balls, uh, this match sucked balls. <laughs> Tell us, BA, what 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 really killed you in NXT? Um, what killed me with NXT? Um, I guess I think. The hype around Title Tuesday, I think that was it, was, it was, I mean, I get them. They got to sell it. I understand. But I think everybody knew in their right mind, like, not only LeBron was not going to lose that strap, but Lamanda Rose was not about to lose to Alba Fire this, this, that night either. Right. Elbow, Elbow fire. greasy fire. Can, can we talk about this? <laughs> okay. I, I have, I got some Yeah, let me hear. Uh, I feel like they've, They've ran this feud into the ground, and if if you didn't think they were unsure about elbow fire, I mean they've extinguished her ass completely. <laughs> we're gonna give you a new name change, and we're gonna have you challenge for the title eighteen times, and you're never going to win. Goodbye. <laughs> if she's, I don't think she's ever getting another title shot. Uh, I think they are like, hey, I don't know if y'all seen that clip. Uh, I think it's a, of a uh, tattoo show where a guy is arguing with this woman and dude is saying like, man, blah, blah, blah. She's like, why are you even here? You're not even a good tattoo artist. And he's, he's like, bitch, why are you four? Why are you 23? But you look 45 in the face. That's what they're saying about elbow fire. And it, I think with that same mantra, they're not looking to put her over. Cause if you looked at title Tuesday, uh, Lamanda Rose looked exquisite. I was like, good golly, Miss Molly, that's a, a very eye catching champion. She's low key and only then, 30. I know, <laughs> but she's aging like Benjamin. Like, Blood. I, she been through some shit, fellas. I don't know what, but when that documentary come out, so maybe in 50 years, she'll look like she's three, <laughs> but right now. She looks like 107. I was like, elbow fire. I was like, I don't. You never get carded, right? <laughs> like, you, give me a shot of whiskey. And they're like, yes, ma'am. Face card I'm sorry. undefeated. <laughs> and they're like, I was like, thank you for your service. What? <laughs> like, they just think she's serving. You had to serve in some war. Right? Not, not, not military service. <laughs> war. Like you were in an actual war. You fought. You killed war. some people. You, you've you, seen some things. You've been through some things. <laughs> right. You seen some shit. <laughs> you was in both she world wars. Right. You got a face that just looks like it saved some uh, trauma. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Using both world wars on both sides at some I'm point. I'm telling you, man. Ever since like that, it's a it's an episode early in the catalog. At least when I started coming on the show, when E Ray said when she was Kylie Ray and said that she just looks like just that that old. I can't get that image out my head, man. It's it's terrible. I don't want to. And I love women in wrestling. I'm not trying to be that guy. Please don't come after me, wrestling Twitter. But I can't no, it's true. unsee the age. That's not really there. It's weird. Because I, I was like, I thought she was a a, a, a hard, hard yeah, man, like final boss. <laughs> I was out like, wait, here, you're only no, no, sir. Yeah, I was like, you only. I was about to say, like... fi- yeah, let's okay, say, let's look, not. We're do not that. about to. We can, not, we're not say. about to do that. But <laughs> right, we're not going to just go down this rabbit hole, guys. But. <laughs> I was just letting y'all know that that was easily just Homer Simpson into that bush. Y'all can have this conversation. But I mean, from from a business perspective, and you're drive and you're trying to drive audience to your product, I don't think they're convinced with her gimmick or what she looks like as the champion. I'll say that. that that's the the very politically correct, okay, proper way to say it. Lamanda Rose has gotten all the all the swag juice. She doesn't even shed like, hey, I don't even need toxic attraction with me. Somebody's gonna pop up. And anyway, and I was like, oh, okay. She looked great. It was a great match. But I was like, yeah, she's not winning. And then lo and behold, I love Dawn. The like, witch of I NXT who that UK. Is. Um, I don't know who that is. I'm sure Dub does because He's watched every single episode ever of NXT. This man just UK. said she was the witch oh, of NXT dumb. UK. You can't tell me he don't watch it, y'all. Come on now, audience. Y'all, y'all hear right. this? That, that's her. 
Right. Never seen I just was looking at her like, mm, delicious. <laughs> Talk about. I was going to say, man, back to Lamanda. Right. I think Lamanda's channeling like early 90s HBK heel, shit heel energy. Like the way she carries herself, the way she kind of moves and matches. Like, like she's, like you said, E-Ray, she knows somebody ain't going to have her back. Don't matter. Toxic Attraction, Isla Dawn or whoever the fuck, the witch at NXT UK, like Dub just said. Which I didn't know before he said that. <laughs> um, yes, <laughs> Lamanda is Lamanda no is early '90s HBK until she gets caught up and they have to do some different stuff with her. Straight up. I mean, she's doing such a great job, though. I think that that's another thing. And again, we, we're we're joking here about um, elbow fire. I, I affectionately call her elbow fire because I love her. But uh, no. Like Alba Fire, I, I have to joke, but it's realistically, it's not even what she's doing, it's what Lamanda's doing. Mandy Rose is doing incredible work as a heel. She is the person I want. I think they are grooming uh Cora Jade to be similar in a, in a similar vein, and they want her to get a little bit of that too. But Mandy Rose got it. And it's like, she is su such a good character. She's so in stride. It's like, how do you take the belt off of her? And if you do, you got to give it to somebody who's going to be your next thing. This isn't a case of like Braun with all these ready-made guys that are probably way better that need, the, that should have the belt. Because And we can't l lie to ourselves like, oh my gosh, Braun Breaker is going against another guy that is way better than him and he wins. This is disgusting. <laughs> it's much more like, uh, who who should have this? Like, I mean, I would have been fine if uh, Roxanne Perez would have would have possibly took it, but even then, that felt premature. So, with the women's division, it's a lot harder to see who the next person should be, and specifically when you have such a real working champion that just feels great her gimmick is great only thing i really don't like i'll say i'm not really a big fan of the the uh facetime call promos hey girl what you doing i'm getting my nails done we're champs yeah, it's like, almost as cringe the as the old this? school barbershop like yeah almost. yeah yeah it's 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 close but i'm like whatever especially when elbow fire just appears <laughs> in the background ah monday I'm going to smash it with my back. <laughs> like, what? I'm going to go 96. Like, get off my phone. I got minutes. <laughs> Black batch. Call me back at 9 o'clock when it's free. Yeah, I don't. Shut I'm, up, Monday. I'm not big on, like, the, the FaceTime promo thing, like, in this sense. But I think I think them trying it out here is cool because, like, that's what women do. They talk on FaceTime when they're doing random shit. But, hey, hey, Dub, stay out of women's business. You're right. But I think it's. <laughs> I think at some point they're going to be able to use it in a way that's really going to work. Like, I think it would be really cool in like in the Dexter Loomis program of like, we got this exclusive video of the Miz before he was, while like, he was FaceTime Maurice before he got kidnapped by Dexter Loomis yeah. or some shit like that. Like that's how you use it and make it really work. But to try it out here, I, I'm cool with it. Yeah. And I was going to say more about uh, elbow fire as uh e-ray called her um i believe that she's down there still to be more of a uh ring general for the ladies that are still up and coming to help solid hashtag dub said that mm, yes yeah he did <laughs> he did sorry here, here's dub's credit for the day folks brought to you by manscaped <laughs> um, Right, <laughs> but um, use the code territory twenty yes, percent off discount code <laughs> territory. Just saying, um, guys. But yeah, man, yeah. with um, she's because I don't think that she'll ever. She might hold it again, but she already like put her. She she made the NXT UK Women's Division by holding on to that title for so long over there. Um, so. I think that's like by her being there, she's gonna help out the Nikitas, the Lashes, the um, the other young ladies that are on that roster, the Roxanne's, the Cora's, all of them to more establish their characters to make them champions and all that stuff. At some point, she'll be up on the main roster, absolutely, because you can only do that for so long. And I feel like 
she put her time in for I that. I think she will. At some point, she got dub. I don't think she will. Explain. Further. I think she's a hold over there. I think she's a hold over there until they relaunch NXT Europe. I think there were certain people that they let go of NXT UK and said, hey, do your thing because right now we don't have a spot over for you here. But in about a two years, we're going to call you up when we relaunch NXT Europe and we're bringing all you guys back. You know what? And we're going to okay. re-kill independent wrestling in all of Europe this time. And But there are certain people that were like, all right, we can't. I think the people that you see in NXT UK, right? NXT you now, right? From the NXT UK that aren't getting called up are the ones they were worried that would go to AEW, truthfully. I can't knock that, like, Dub. That's a good take. I like. I love Tyler Bate, but I don't know if they're going to call him up. I think he might be a guy that they look at and say, he can be a flag bearer for this NXT UK brand. I mean, NXT Europe brand for the next 10 to 15. So they're like, you know what? Come over here. Make a couple hundred thousand for the next couple of years. We put you in some spots. Maybe you do something on SmackDown. Maybe you hop on some of the European tours. But the moment NXT Europe launches, you back over there. You're the standard bearer there for a long time. And I have seen uh, them kind of like promoting the, the scouting they're doing in countries they've never been in before as far as trying to do mm-hmm. their whole rookie trial thing with their, to come to the performance center so there is a lot of weight in that I wasn't thinking about how much of an investment they made over there in that but there is a very much on the behind the scenes side they're putting a lot of energy in overseas in that Europe market so that that holds some weight I could see that but yeah, if they, but it would not surprise I'm me if she somehow went up to the like main roster. Alba Fire, Isla Dawn, Tyler Bate, that one black dude from NXT UK. I forget his name because they changed it. Um, yeah. Even you Pretty Deadly. In the NXT UK. <laughs> even Pretty Deadly. Like, it wouldn't shock me if they were like, you know what? You guys are like main roster bound, but when we launch yeah, NXT Europe, Go do a stint over here real quick while we build this division. Same with Gallus. Like, you look at those those guys, right? They're ready-made products. They know what they're doing. If they're not ring generals, they're shit, they're ring lieutenants. But they're you look at them, they're like, yeah, we don't know what this guy over here with all this money in Jacksonville is doing. He's just kind of throwing it around. He's paying a dinosaur, for Christ's mm-hmm. sake. We don't want to lose people. Because even you look at all the guys they lost... After that, a bunch of European Steves. Yeah, like, but the point Fun. is, like, you need those, you need those Steves to build a brand over there. But then you look at like the guys that lost to AEW after they did all the firings to cover up Vince spending all that money. Mm-hmm. You're like, allegedly, you you be like, you be hard pressed. To, <laughs> I mean, allegedly, you be hard pressed to tell me that if you sat Triple H down right now and said, "Yo, if I if you could buy out back. Keith Lee, Swerve, and Adam Cole right now, would you do it?" He'd be like, "Absolutely." I believe it. So then you look at it, you're like, well, Vince isn't paying off people anymore, allegedly. So we got some money to play around with. You guys just hang out. Hang out in Orlando. Go go to Disney a few times. Wrestle once every couple of months. I can see it. I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah. It, it is what it is. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> um, but. I mean, I, I won't be watching I'll... NXT Europe, but, you know, a lot of people will right. be. Because you're like, you miss NXT UK. You're like, the shortened version, <laughs> it's all in the name, baby. What's in the name? Everything for dub. Look, man, I'm just UK. saying, from, from what I heard, NXT UK was a great, just quick one hour of great wrestling with good stories and characters you could get behind. From what I heard, I never watched it, right, but that's like what I heard. John Coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> John Coffee, Mark Coffee, you know. I got a. All of Gallows. Yes, to fan. move on through Mako to move on through the N- NXT episode, what do you guys think of the the new sh- uh, schism or whatever um, with the Ava Rain edition? I'm 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 liking this rendition of them. Um, yeah, it. I like this dimension of because I don't miss GYV as much as I see this current incarnation of what they're trying to do. Um, I mean, I, I well, 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 BA to quote the great American rapper Cameron as the title of his last album, you wasn't there. Suck. Oh, I must say, suck it or not. <laughs> no, you wasn't there. That's, <laughs> that's the name of Cam's new album, Jesus Christ. No, BA, Ma, you wasn't there for GYV's run, <laughs> and it was great. 
I, 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 I went back yeah, and watched yeah. some matches, Dub. Like I, I'm familiar with. I saw those dudes wrestle. They very much. It was different. It was different when it was week to week, man. I, I, I mean, I'm sorry I wasn't there, but I, I have Peacock. Guys. I went back and watched episodes. Like I know who they are. Like. <laughs> B A. It's you not got, the same. You don't got a same. little brother me on this. Like, he wasn't watch, there. Watch it, right? You watch it on the cock. Is that you randomly at, in your house just looking back just for like educational purposes? It's not. That's like saying, "Hey, I watched a documentary about the Civil War," or somebody outside as the tides are fucking turning, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, is slavery still going to be around? <laughs> Am I going to be?" One hundred percent respect tomorrow? that take. As a quantum leaper that goes back to the actual events that took place <laughs> versus watching the documentaries on WWE, one hundred percent agree. Oh, thank you. <laughs> But that, that's what I, I mean. So when you're in it and you're like excited, about, it's the same reason of us trying to tell uh, the younger generation about the greatness of Stone Cold Steve Austin, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. It's like, they're like, what? You, you, you kind of speak to my point or, from or, earlier. What wrestling even that meant. Take, you kind of taking my thunder with the Stone Cold take I had earlier. Because that's why I want that stuff to be preserved. I don't want something to ruin those kids no, viewpoint no 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 no, 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 no. he no, can no. go now so now the kids are there uh, they're there well, now. they ain't gonna be the same but, but to you guys's point well, they but, don't no, know that because no, they have no point of reference yes they do they go back and watch the shit on just, peacock it's just that's no because they wasn't there VA. i understand what we're talking about there. currently i'm speaking back to quantum leap it no pun intended to the original argument of stone cold you guys are making the point that I was trying to make. I don't want it's the nostalgia no, no, ruined. Nope. Is all I was saying. I disagree a thousand percent because it doesn't ruin the nostalgia. Because guess what? You watch WrestleMania last year, right? You watch Stone Cold give Vince McMahon. Yeah, a first stunt, time I've right? seen Stone Cold do anything in the ring outside of drinking beers and stunning random people. Yes, it was great. And how did it was you feel awesome. about that? It was awesome. But I wasn't sitting here saying like I can't wait to the match oh. next year. Wait, 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 no, 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 none of that. Yes, it was awesome. in that moment in time, that was it was 20, awesome. Right, twenty twenty two. It didn't ruin how you feel about ninety seven. No, because they did it very days. one. They did it masterfully. They no, pulled no, no, it no, off. No. Great. You're adding caveats to. You're adding additional things and. and I'm explaining my answer. I'm not adding anything. This is. So, Bia, let me I'm ask you out this. My, I'm right so you don't you don't want Stone Cold there. Do you not want Rock there either? No, The Rock. I, we, we've been talking about this. The Rock has business with Roman Reigns, and The Rock <laughs> has wrestled in the last ten years and did an actual program. And, and he, hasn't, his whole, he hasn't wrestled in seven and years since that match he and had with Cena. His and whole body exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like he had an actual Stone match Cold done. wrestled last year. No, he wrestled this year. What am I so, saying? Uh, he wrestled. So Seven months I'm ago. I'm just saying, y'all. Rock hasn't wrestled in seven years. Okay, but that's longer than what Stone Cold did before he went into that heavily giving match that he did last year, too. The Rock went. Right. But you said you're okay with The Rock doing it. But I think, look, this is what it, it comes down to. You said it was okay that The Rock does it, even though The Rock actually did tear all his flesh off the bone. Stone Cold seemed, Steve Austin seemed to be perfectly fine. That's number one. Different number kind two, of match. It's a recency bias. No, 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 it's a recency bias because you've seen The Rock just in the zeitgeist. You've just constantly seen him. So you're like, oh, yeah, The Rock looks great. He can still do this stuff, even though it takes a different skill set to actually wrestle versus to show up and be buff Completely and just work agree. in the gym. Everybody says that. Everybody knows that. Stone Cold, we haven't seen him. So we're just like, oh, my gosh, the last time I seen him was in my favorite time of seeing him. I don't want Correct. that diminished. That's why, because Stone Cold doesn't have any of these ventures and vehicles outside of. That's true. Outside wrestling. of the Broken Skull so podcast, we, we that is correct. Right, because we can't hate. Like, if you don't like The Rock's match, so what? You still gonna get to see The Rock's movie? You still gonna watch The Rock show? You still gonna drink Mana, Termana, Terramana? I just had a Zola uh, yesterday, by the way. Energy drinks. <laughs> yeah. Them Zola's a slap. Yes, they boy. do. Yeah, I don't want to have a heart attack <laughs> and start doing the haka. <laughs> <laughs> And just drop dead. <laughs> My heart exploded. <laughs> There's lesser caffeine in the Zoas than the uh -oh. other ones on the market. And this is not a paid endorsement. <laughs> yeah, it, I was like, it, right. Hit them up next. Uh, is it? Um, 
like a do they got a decaf Zoa? Like, cause motherfuckers be like, it's with raw guana juice and 452 <laughs> milligrams of caffeine. I was like, if I if I put this in my car, I would be good. I got a full tank of gas for the next seven <laughs> years. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, is but in if, this but shit? if you put that in your car, you gotta listen to the Rock's verse on that Tech Nine oh. song for forever. Support for Let Me Book the Territory is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate in men's hygiene bundle. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code TERRITORY at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 14 million balls. Damn, that's a lot of balls, B.A. But get 20% off and free shipping with the code TERRITORY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code TERRITORY. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Literally, folks, don't do Like, don't want to do that ever. That's one thing. Okay, there we go. You've just ran into the greatest possible juxtaposition ever. BA, answer. You got three seconds only. Do you would you rather watch Stone Cold Steve Austin in a match at WrestleMania or listen to The Rock's Tech Nine verse on repeat for a whole Stone day? Stone Cold. Go. Not fair. Ah, <laughs> there you go. You got it. BA just proved our point, guys. It's like E-Ray is always right. I can't even understand why this always happens, but greatness is upon me. Thank you, no. BA, for proving my point. And nope. let's move on. Nope, you don't get that more. painted me into a corner, guys. <laughs> See the bullying that's happening here? I'm being bullied. It's 2022. I'm being bullied. Speaking <laughs> of being painted into a corner, um, you get put oh, in a corner geez. when you get... <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that. I was going to bring up the Iron Survivor match. The new match that Shawn Michaels announced at NXT with all these stipulations. All this innovation. I was like, wait, is this every type of match I've ever heard of? Yes. every. So, can, can, can I just give you a, 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 um, a mock rundown of exactly what I got when I watched the, uh, the preview? Yes. I would love for somehow low to like intersect like the, a couple seconds of that clip in there somehow, but uh, be that as it may, I turned it on and I heard, "Hey guys, Shawn Michaels here. We're we're all about innovation, and with that said, innovation, we're gonna just make a match, and this match isn't any match. It's an Iron Man match from the future." with cages and cyborgs and then as many falls as you possibly can get in 13 seconds and we also play laser tag and if you find a gun with a laser grenade then you also have to go into the chamber of secrets and then harry potter is also there and if you battle voldemort and you say the magic words then you win and that's going to be our next thing because we're all about innovation here at NXT. And then you got to go put the head on the okay. shrine of the silver monkey in Omex Temple. <laughs> <laughs> Booked. A dude come out like, <laughs> oh shit. That's all I was thinking. As you were reading that E Ray, like, if, yeah, if my brain, mean? I was just thinking of this, like, the. The the, the 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 blue barracudas <laughs> versus the the, <laughs> the green iguanas or whatever the versus fuck. Yeah, silver, the silver snakes. snakes yes that's all i was thinking of i'm like Red this sounds man. ridiculous purple man. <laughs> oh man for, for, for those who don't legend know, of the hidden nxt <laughs> title contender and right? there's your title of episode 62 it, boo, boo, boo. Right. oh my god <laughs> Boop, 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 oh, boop. Man. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, I would I would rather watch that. I felt like, well, let's be real. I think WMAC Masters and uh, Lucha Underground pretty much was uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple for wrestling. Facts. Oh, but yes, it, I'll say if WWE decided to do it and then interject Time Cop slash 
Terminator rules. This is what uh, was it called? I don't even know the, the fuck Iron match. Survivor match. Yeah, what the fuck is the Iron Survivor match? Let me let me go over. Let me go over the. Let me go over the rules for this one more it's time. Get out your calculators, listeners. So Get out your calculators. Fifteen years. Yeah, it's a lot, <laughs> lot of numbers in this one. A lot of num- lot of Steiner oh, math Jesus. in this. All right. First, so there's going to be a men's and women's, and the winner of each of those is going to be the number one contender after NXT deadline. So we got five competitors. The match starts with two competitors, and another competitor will enter the match. Every five. Every five minutes. minutes. Correct. And so all five competitors are in the match. A person wins a fall. A person with the most falls in the 25 minutes wins the match. You can win a fall by pinfall, submission, or or disqualification. disqualification. The person who takes the pinfall has to go into the penalty box for 90 seconds. I'm gonna pause you right there, Dub. So you just got That's a sign beat. of our influence. They heard about who? Like, what's this one? Have you heard the word right. penalty box used in wrestling? Come on now. I've listened to a lot of wrestling podcasts. I've watched a lot of stuff about Not wrestling. Once. Never. Only here. Give us our credit. Come right. on, HBK. Right, right here. They they might as well just call it the Chibani thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, listen, guys. You I, get pinned. You go on a Chobani I, chamber. I think Chobani was not interested in sponsoring hey, just that. Swimming. Probably that's why they couldn't use it. <laughs> right, sponsored by. Listen, I'm gonna tell you this. play in Chobani. If I hear the phrase Chobani chamber mentioned on WWE television at all, oh, I'm showing so. up to Connecticut, knocking on the door, like, "Yo, who in HR do I need to talk to for my paycheck? Right. I, I, I need right. to know." Nah, dog, I ain't even doing it. I'm showing up Duh, with my yes. lawyers that I'm gonna hire. From from my friends in high places, and I'm gonna show right up in Stanford and be like, um, I need to see whoever's in in control of the scripting for WWE right. and go from there. Like, like, hey, you got you guys are accustomed to this, you know. That's why you're on WWE now. You remember the <laughs> WWF? No, many kids don't. But guess what? I want my ducats, <laughs> my green backs. Give them to me. Um, so, guys, yeah, our, now, our influence aside, what do you guys think about this innovative, very convoluted match idea? I think that I'm literally like, how is this possible that you beat the shit out of somebody? You just pin them because either you like twisted their arm to pieces or you hit them with, with a final finisher and knocked them unconscious. How do they get into the penalty box? You just say. drag this, like referees drag them in. They drag them to the penalty your box. Ass. Like it's kind of like a bunch of uh, um, <laughs> tuas just going to get dragged. <laughs> 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 I know you got a concussion, oh but God, get in this right. penalty box for ninety seconds, and then come out and right. get your ass whipped again. Right. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but look. I know it, this, we all know wrestling is uh, theater and it's a suspension of disbelief. So I feel like they will make it work and it'll be fun. So I'm, I'm in that regard, I am not going to uh, hate and I'm, I'm going to believe it. But I, a- I just think the origin, it's very interesting how original it is, but I'm curious like how to play out. It does. It doesn't come off good. The announcement, but it, it feels I'm, like I'm it's too much, to right? It. Yeah, a little bit. Ba, give me like, simplify. Give me your five men's competitors in this match. Who would you pick? Am I allowed to pick anybody? These people have to be champions of any nature, or allowed to be champions, or no? Well, it can't. It can't. Well, it can't be Braun can't Breaker. Be Braun Breaker. That's it. So, That's anybody else. Right. Yeah. And it can't be a, a woman. Got to gotcha. have a Penis and not Braun Breaker. He Got said it. For the, he said for the men. <laughs> Look, very loose yes, stipulation. Yes. What about very what about loose. balls? Do they have to be shaved or no? Oh, sorry, I had to ask. Sorry. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm not judging my wrestlers I'm by just, that. I, um, but it's your I'm world. Just yeah. asking. You're talking you about your penises. Five. Think, you pick your right, five. Five buddy. guys yeah. that I would like to see in that match. Um, number one is going to be Mellow, of course. Um, two. I am. Two, I would put in that spot Grayson. Grayson Waller. Okay. Um, three. 
Shotgun. Apollo the Equalizer Cruise. Apollo. Four. Apollo. I would put. Wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out. Apollo's in the title match at deadline. Can't pick Apollo. Ah, okay, thank you. I thought I could still pick him. Oh, versus uh, yeah. Braun Breaker? Yes. Oh. Yeah. That's going to be, that'll be finally a Braun back match back I'm excited to see. Even. Clip that too low because I've never said that on this show. Oh, so I need three more then with that being said since Apollo was my third. Um, give me number three would be Joe Gacy. Number four would be, hmm, let's go with, uh, God damn it, I don't want to pick this dude. Von Wagner. Um, and number five, I will plug in there. And this is just because he's a bit more provident. I, I wasn't curious what they're going to do with him. Our guy, Veer. Let's throw Veer in that bitch. So that would be my five. Okay. Not mad at that. That would be the... Str- I am, I'm I'm. not going to say I'm mad at it, but that would be the <laughs> weirdest. Man, I don't, I don't think you could sell me on this match with that those guys being your starters. You... Just think about who was in the North American, the inaugural North American yes. championship title match, ladder match, being, it was Adam Cole. Adam Cole, and- Velveteen Dream, Lars Sullivan, EC3. And Ricochet? And Ricochet, or- yeah. Because it was, it was Ricochet, EC3's, like, very first match. And, like, Adam Cole's, like, second or third. And then imagine we go from that to the Iron Survivor, and you got Veer <laughs> and Joe Casey. <laughs> I didn't want to put guys in there that's like in like title discussions, like right there on the cusp of accomplishing. So like I could have picked Wesley. I didn't want to pick Wesley. Um, to me, you take out Veer and you put in Tony D, and that's your match. Oh yeah. Good old Tony D. Okay. Assuming, assuming Tony D's back from this. I was going to say, I forgot about Tony D. Okay, so Tony D, uh, Waller, um, Carmelo, and then who else? Uh, Gacy and Vaughn. Gacy. Okay, yeah, I, I hate that. I Essentially, like your that. five pillars of 2.0. Ugh. Yeah, um, <laughs> and no, 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 uh, shot to you, BA. You, you did the best you could with what, what you were given, but I don't, I don't like that at all. Um, I would choose, of course, um, Mello, Mello's money. I would put in our boy McDonough, he got to be in there because he's just constantly a pest, a menace to everybody. And I think that would be fun just watching them break people off, hurting their fingers and shit. Uh, I think we are going to put Grayson Waller in there just because it, it'd be entertaining. He can also mix it up, have some fun there. Um, and then for my two other guys. Your next I two guys think- have to be baby faces just for storytelling purposes. I mean, do they? You're going to have five <laughs> heels in the match? Hell yeah. That's my type of match, motherfucker. <laughs> I was going to say, that's, this shit. that's more innovative than the actual match. Facts. <laughs> like, <laughs> heel off. Um, I would have uh, uh, Dijak. Ooh, return to Dominic Dijak. I like that. Oh, yeah. He premieres man. there in the match. Because you need a, a, not a guy that can really go that... that I think that that automatically is great. And your fifth and is going to be Scripps, just... right? No, I, I think that's still a woman. I still think Scripps is a woman. So I'm going to go with, uh, I would probably put in, oh, I just had him for the baby face. My baby face would be, oh. Hey, uh, the security guard? Axiom. Axiom. I'm, I'm not mad at that. Yeah, I think that would be, uh, and again, no shot to you, BA, but I think that is a vastly superior match to hey. watch with the workers. From the workers' work standpoint, there. you're good. I'm not offended. I, I love beer, <laughs> right? I, I love beer, but <laughs> I'm here for pure insanity, people. I'm not here for anything. No else. bond wagon. Yeah, exactly. He just wants to watch the world yes. burn. What is Me happening? And the Joker. All right, so 
All right, yeah, I'm going to start with you this time. Give me your five for the women's match. This one is a lot easier because the women are all over the place. Um, let's, all right, let, I, let's assume that Nikita's challenging for the title uh, at deadline. But not Zoe? Not Zoe. Huh, interesting. I would have I would have flipped it and had Zoe challenging. Really? So, hmm, okay. Yeah, I think that's because... No, you know what? You, know, you said that you, before. You booking it. You booking it, so... Yes. That's Zoe's, I, I, Zoe's challenging say, Mandy. Zoe's challenging Mandy at, at deadline. I'm going to go with uh, Roxanne Perez. I'm going with uh, Nikita Lyons. Cora Jade. I think we got to, of course, unfortunately, throw elbow fire in there. And then I'd... Uh, Last legend? No, not at all. <laughs> Keep her far away from any type of television matching. Uh, it's it's hard because I I got like what basically one baby face in there, mm-hmm. or, or one and a half because the key lines. Fallon Henley. So. Um, maybe. I'm trying to think. Like yeah. there aren't many like baby faces in the women's division. Yeah, I I think that would that would go, or I might throw uh. Illadon. Illadon. She's a heel too. Her in there. Yeah, but I, I, I got two baby faces, three heels. That works. Okay. All and right. Then Not... they beat up on the baby faces, and then, you know, they yeah. do their thing. Like... BA. Um, you all right? You falling asleep over no, there? No, not asleep. I'm just trying, I'm sitting here trying to think about the women's match is hard to book. It's harder to book than the men's match, I feel like. Oh, um, shit. Well, BA's about to give us some pure <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> I'm gonna just put three tag right. teams. Fuck it. Give me the TikTok <laughs> tag team. Give me no, I'm just like, um <laughs> all right. Five chicks. That's not Mandy. And you said I'm allowed to use Nikita, right? E Ray used Nikita, I believe. I can use Nikita. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can use whoever yeah, you want yeah, to. Yeah. You can actually swap it and not have Yeah, you can have Nikita them, in the title match if you want. Yeah. All right, so um I will say my five will be I just definitely Nikita just because of where she's at um, booking wise. Because you want to see her in there. Where there's a wheel, there's a wheel. <laughs> That's B.A. <laughs> of old. B.A. of new has, has, has washed his hands of the right. thickness as hard as it is. All that whatever B.A. Thickness on my hands. When, when we meet her at the WrestleMania after party, you're going to fold like a chair. Yeah, somebody just be there <laughs> to, to catch me, y'all. That's all I'm going to ask. <laughs> Uh, oh, just, yeah, like like back in the day, the twerk. Oh, party. yeah, exactly. there you go. <laughs> you right. Boy, dance yeah. Hold them up. Hold them up. Hold them up. Oh. Uh, uh. Hey, man, I'm getting tired. Hey, somebody tag right. me up. Right, 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 right. Um, it's too much. <laughs> um, all right. Like I said, yes, great times. Uh, Nikita, give me a Roxy Roxanne. Give me uh, Cora the Heel Jade. Give me... Hmm. <laughs> Give me Fallon Henley. Okay. And then my fifth... Nah, I can't do that. That would, that would just be pure insanity. My fifth's gonna have to be... Do it. This is random. I'm gonna give throw Indy a bone. Indy, Hartwell. Hey, Give me Indy. That's a good call. Good call. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I was I was thinking Indy too. All right, for my five, I'm going Indy, Roxanne, Thick Heat Alliance. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, I don't want to put Alba in because I feel like she's been in too many spots recently. Yeah, I don't think this is the match for. Give her some time off. Go home. Yeah, go back to over. over hey, five. Go home. Rest your bones. You got arthritis. <laughs> Osteoporosis. That will be some milk. You need some milk of magnesia. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I need my Metamucil, sonny. You uh, know what? <laughs> Kiana James, because it seems like they're trying to push her. Okay. And then last will be Fallon Henley. There we go. I'm not mad. I will watch all of those. Unlike the... <laughs> <laughs> the male version. Where I'm like, oh no, I'm skipping that one. This would be pretty fun. I think it would 
Uh, let me ask, out of those, who would y'all book to win? Of the women's. I don't care about the men's. Uh... That's a more interesting conversation. Because, you know, the stipulation on the line would be an automatic title shot. Mm, I think the the corporate answer is Nikita. I think who I want to see for booking purposes would be Cora. Hmm. Dub. Um, close to BA, I would say yeah. The, the corporate answer is Takeda. Um, the one I want to see is Indy. I want to see Indy with this change of personality and her like teetering towards like just being healed because that's how you get things done and like I think her kind of teetering towards heel but not being fully healed against this asshole of a heel that is Mandy Rose is an interesting story to tell when Indy kind of like alright well I just kind of kind of be me and like being me is not being this asshole and I, I think that's an interesting story to tell going forward so I would I'd like to see Indy win but I'd also uh-huh. like for them to let me book that entire feud yeah, I, I like where you're going with that. I think the out of mind, the best story would have to be with uh, Roxanne. Cause y'all y'all did y'all did the thing. You heat her back up, and now it's like, all right, let's go ahead and, and push her and make it happen. So she, her being there, she had again, she couldn't do it the first time, but then she has so much room. She has a great look, and yeah, she can go. So. I think that would be where I would like to see the Iron Survivor go. See, and it's a face versus heel. I want Roxanne to win it against like somebody who's just as skilled in the ring as her, but is also like that super heel. Because to me, when she had her match with Mandy, it was like, damn, she's like still kind of way better than Mandy in the ring. But you're like, all right, Mandy did the heel things to win. Like I, I want to see her like legitimately overcome. Like, oh damn. This person is just as good as you, if not better. And they're willing to do whatever it takes to win, like cheat and use weapons. Like, that woman doesn't like, exist, though. Right in, who would that be? I don't know. I don't know. Right. Right. There's right. No right. Heel. That woman doesn't There's exist. There's no heel that skill that can give you that. They wish yeah. it was Mandy. There's no other woman. There's no other woman that skill. I mean, except for maybe uh, Zoe Stark, but she would have to win first and then not be a transitional. Yeah. Player. Yeah. Like, so that's a lot to ask for. It is. <laughs> I know. That is a ton. I know. I'm, well, guys, I think we've we've done our best to uh, uh, really book the territory when it came to all the latest and greatest in WWE. On a more sour <laughs> note, we we're, we're here. What the fuck is Tony Khan doing on a daily basis? Um, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. We gonna get right to the shits. What the fuck is going on over there? I don't think they know the what is the problem with AEW. Some someone give me an answer cuz I think since the scrum situation, I think about 2 weeks in we were like, "Oh, we're pretty high on what's going on." It's just been almost baffling how bad it's been. And I think records in attendance uh like they couldn't the draw 6,000 people. I think that's the punk effect, y'all. It it's a well, that, but also you got to remember they're hitting the same fucking territories over and over. So they're over squeezing and they, they, they're they not left enough juice because they're just hitting the same places. They hit Buffalo like four times. They went like, oh, and, you know, they, they're going back to Chicago. Again, yeah, again, again. you're right okay. on that. You're right. Diminishing returns. Yeah. So when you're not, when you're there like every other week, it's like, ah, I'll go to the next one. Or they'll be here again. They yeah, last and it's and it's not like how when it was then that's that's like territory booking almost. No pun intended because of the fact that literally you're going to these same towns, which used to work when there wasn't technology to keep people like entertained and other things. You would have those diehards right there every week, ready to watch the same shit basically in the same place every every week. You can't do that in this day and age. With res- if you want to be a big promotion, like that's cool for like your MLWs, your impacts, like that's what's kind of expected. 
places without a a, a huge correct TV deal. yeah like you can't do that because that huge tv deal is like oh i'm watching this and then if you're just there too it's like, eh, i don't need to i can just watch this at home which uh, yeah i, like I, I was just at AEW live three weeks ago why are they back right and honestly yeah or the people that's like ah, crazier take about AEW. i feel like the pandemic kind of did them a favor if anything because it absolutely hit a lot of their warts as far as what could be happening on the in front of a live crowd and they were in the same location pretty much every week up until pay-per-views and they would just go i mean they were in jacksonville pretty much the whole time so they were in daily's place like for a year yeah straight. i think that helped them a lot like now the pressure's on you can't ride that punk wave no more you're not gonna get them big crowds that want to see cm punk you you couldn't advertise the Bucks and Omega, and I'll give them credit. I got because I can't have it all be negative. At least they did not have Omega and the Bucks show their face to try to get some people to want to buy this shit on Saturday. So I'll give them that. Give them that much for Dynamite, but everything else was an absolute shit show. Sixty car pile up on 480 West if you live in the north in, in the northern part of Ohio. Um, so yeah, it was it was bad. Um, I can't excuse it, but I'll at least give him that. So we're just not all negative. He at least booked that portion of their show properly to not let them come out and to give some intrigue around their appearance. But I ain't got no answer for you, Dub. I don't know what the fuck Tony Khan's doing. Okay. Um. Well, let me ask you this, because they got a pay-per-view coming up. Yes. And... We always ask this. This is our our uh, was it quarterly quarterly question for for AEW. So again, after all that stuff has happened, um, there's been some belts change hands. Uh, we finally got Orange Cassidy with with the Trans Union Transylvanian Atlantic Slave <laughs> Trade title. That he uh, defends which, weekly, uh, by the way. About. It's very strange because Pac didn't defend it all yeah, like that. Because that should be the. I track. mean, no, that Pac did defend it weekly. They just kicked him out the country to do it. Oh, okay, <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> right, go fight in Transylvania. Literally, go go meet Count Vlad. <laughs> you can fight him there for for immortality. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, he he's fighting um, random people. They they ash good scars good scars guys like I don't know I don't know that guy whoever whoever that is yeah well he he has cool music I guess but yeah they're fighting um apparently there was this thing running where literally every every uh, promo with the young bucks and uh, Kenny Omega getting like snapped out of existence uh we just found out randomly from a TikTok clock and a reappearance without any words from them or anything else done that they're going to be challenging for the trios titles. Uh, yeah. The, the silence is definitely... <laughs> it, it, it literally tells us how we feel about this. So, with that said, I, I won't leave you in suspense. War Joe has broken up. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Um... I would say Sneaky Swerve and Keith Lee, as as uh, the acclaimed like to call them, and this feud they have with the acclaimed is probably the best thing they got going in AEW. Um, Soraya getting called back, and she's clear now. She's going against uh, Britt Baker. These are the things that we're 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 watching now. Um, and then Jamie Hayter versus uh, Tony Mama Summer. Cakes. Yes. Affectionately, Mama Cakes. So um, E-Ray said all of that. and To ask the most important question, has Tony Khan done enough to get you to buy this pay-per-view? It's our, our, our quarterly question. We ask this every, every couple months. Hard no. Hard the hardest no. of no's. Um... Um, Mm-mm. blue chew of nose. <laughs> <laughs> Who does not sponsor us yet? Right. It's so veiny. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 
Um, for a Jamie Hayter so, and Tony Storm to be legitimate best friends who used to live together during the pandemic, they did not do enough to tell that story at all. You give me one vignette of two people who you're just trying to make into blood enemies and say, oh, yeah. she's not my friend anymore. She's Britt's friend. That's the story you're telling here, Tony? Really? Really? And why is Powerhouse Hobbs jumping jumping Wardlow now? I'm, I'm confused. I... Does, no, he just wants that title. Oh, he just wants the title, so he decided to start jumping up. Support for Let Me Book the Territory is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package, the ultimate man hygiene bundle. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free shipping worldwide with the code territory at manscaped.com and if my math is correct that's about 14 million balls dang a dub that's a lot of balls man but you can get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code territory at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code territory unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped manscaped And then, That's it. and then Wardlow said he's coming for all the titles, and Joe's like, "Oh no, you not, not mine." Right? <laughs> hey, Joe been here before. He, he, ain't, he ain't <laughs> shit. I know. I my daddy was a preacher. I know better than mess around with this foolishness. So, so lock your ass in the back of the head. So moment. that's how we get to that match. Okay. Um, this four way for the Ring of Honor title. You have two. You have two different factions that make up the four guys. Like, Silly. And one of them is a heel faction, so do I expect Sammy and Chris to come to blows at all during this match? Absolutely not. Especially when they've shown no dissension. Yeah. Silly. And like, all right, we get it. Blackpool Complex Club, they'll fight each other all day, every day. They just like to fight each other. Cool. I get that. Ah. Ah. Um, I will say this, though. Before the last three weeks... The only thing I know about Bandito is how cool his mask look. I'm becoming a bigger fan every single week. Dude can fucking go. And Same. Ethan Page deserves better than all of AEW. <laughs> I, I agree, but I, I love Ethan Page, so more power to him. Huge, Great huge fan. Huge uh, fan. And uh, MGH. I mean, MJF. <laughs> <laughs> MGH. Versus... <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Sorry, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm just calling it as I see it. MJF looks great. Uh, I don't know if he got that stemo pack. He got a little bit of uh, the sups. Got some sups. Some or he was off TV for a grip. Ah, whatever. What he, yeah. That's a cycle. He uses time wisely. Thirty on, sixty off. And so. Uh, Just, just out of curiosity, MJF versus Moxley. Do you? I that I think that may be the second only feud that I'm actually enjoying how they're building. Really? So I'm enjoying how they're building it, but to me, they booked themselves into such a corner with everything that's happened, and part of, part of it's not their fault because of the injuries that have happened, and. Punk deciding to beat up everybody that they booked themselves into this corner where like I just want to see that they do the right thing and they put that belt on MJF and they let that man John Moxley go on vacation because he deserves it um so that might that would be the only reason I would buy this to see if they really do the dumb thing and not put that belt on MJF yeah. so that way I can be like oh okay so the monkeys are running the asylum here gonna go ahead and turn this off forever I'm out and no, they they going But that being said, the build is great. They gonna do that, Dub. I think honestly, I'm surprised y'all are all for this build. I think the build is turning me off, honestly, man, week by week, because of how they're trying to make talk more, talk MJF more. like this overcomer. Like, I'm afraid that they're gonna turn him or he's gonna start behaving as a character that he like he shouldn't be when he finally got this title. Um 
it's it's kind of like tweener ish because they're trying to make like he overcame the firm and he beat all these dudes up um i think the way that you oh they're turning in baby face and it's a bad idea but i don't think they have any other that's options. what shocks me about you guys loving yeah, the build choice, but i think they do like they well, they like, like first and foremost they're well, telegraphing this whole william regal turning on the the bcc thing or whatever i think i it's it's telegraphed so terribly um but it's what's good for business because it'll give mjf something to do when mox leaves I just, I guess I don't, I guess I'm just not hyped for it because it's so just, what else are they going to do? Like, they have to make it this way. Some of it's not their fault, injuries and such, but I just don't, I'm not as excited as I was when um, All Out happened, when he won that chip and he came on to show that he was the mad, he was the joker and all that stuff. I was way more hot for this, this situation than where we stand today three days away from the pay-per-view, excuse me, a day away from the pay-per-view. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll say this just to kind of shoot us some bail a little bit. I don't think we're excited about uh, the build because of anything more than just the promo work. Mm-hmm. That's just what, what I like about it. I'm excited whenever MJF comes up because he'll – face or or tweener he just knows how to captivate an audience with his words so it it's just so fun to watch and at least it's something versus hey two best friends that ain't best friends no more because they're girls <laughs> like what that's what y'all telling me okay i guess um that's the story or, on your world title right or hey i'm black i want to take the belt from other people i wear a chain now that that's it. That's I wear two I chains now. Right, it, it's like you don't get a lot of storytelling, or it, or even if you don't get the storytelling, you don't get a lot of like equal build. Hey, hey, good hey! I'm black. I wear two chains. I beat up my skinny friend. Now I want your gold shiny thing. Yeah, I mean again, that's the entire the story other, I told with Hobbs. The entire thing. The the only other thing that even equates to decent with that is uh again the keith lee and swerve versus um the claim that that shit's good the the music video they did beating up uh daddy ass ripping his hands off so he's sitting there like dual, dual hand cast he can't scissor so they gotta sell merch get the scissor fingers and everybody it's just all that stuff's great and then even Swerve just being incredible. That match that he had against Anthony Bowens, fan fucking test. Mm-hmm. So that's about it. But I think that's always been a problem with AEW. They don't know how to do multiple things at once, and uh, multiple good things. It's like, oh, you get one good thing that you're looking forward to, and a bunch of random exhi- exhibitions. Yeah. Like, okay, Bandito versus. Cheetos, <laughs> Cheetos, some Malamanca or some shit like what? Speaking Ooh. of random exhibitions, why is there a Ring of Honor pay per view in December? <laughs> what you mean, AEW presents Ring of Honor? <laughs> 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 like, is there's not? They haven't built anything with anybody Ring of Honor outside of Chris Jericho at all. True, and a little bit, like, and, a, and, a, and a taste of Daniel Garcia in the whole peer championship. A taste, exactly. Um, BA, who's our women's champion right now? Oh, man, I'll be, <laughs> I'll, I'll be out some money if you told me to put some dough on that one. I will be out. Mercedes Martinez. Oh yeah, she's coming when back. Last time she was on. She television. was hurt, I think. Right. Since when? I thought, May, I, bruh. I thought she was injured or something. Like I'm not even gonna cap. I for, I forgot about her completely until you just said. And I saw and I was on, I saw her on Twitter today. I saw the people talking about her on Twitter. Yeah. In and out. Who's the Ring of Honor Tag Champions? Ooh, I know this. That's FTR, man. Seven Star okay, FTR, the best wanted, tag I, team in the business that just, doesn't get just, booked properly. Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> My guys, man. <laughs> Oh, speaking of which, okay, so, um, so AEW has so a selling their merch to tomorrow. Title Sorry, AEW has a, a selling their merch tomorrow. If you want to get some Living Legend stuff for our Living Legends fans out there, but yeah. Sorry, Dub, I had to get that out there. Hey, are they selling I mean, that jacket? Twenty percent off? Are they selling yes, that jacket? Yes, it is. 
Uncle Dax posted it. He made a point to she show like this is, will be 25% off on November 18th. So yes, I had to get that out there. All right. All right. Go check out your yeah. AEW merch shop. To get that jacket. Right. So yes, but, but um, who's FTR feuding with that they're going to have a, a title match on pay-per-view that you're going to care about? No one. You want to see another match with the Briscoes? Yes. <laughs> I love that shit. I pop for that. Let dudes get it in. I haven't seen any of the previous matches. That's not enough to sell me. But BA, they got his. He, well, got I like his FTR, dollar. man. Clearly. That's because that's the only that's the only thing. I'll I'll support them dudes. Whatever they do, man. Again, BA, you wasn't there for NXT. You talking to two guys who love FTR. But these guys, but these two guys that could care less <laughs> and won't give a dollar to watch them fight the Briscoes again. And what are arguably some of the best tag team matches of the year. If we want to talk about it, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I've never been a fan of the Briscoes. I haven't either. I'm not here to tell (laughs) you to be a fan of them, but you should watch those matches. At least the Death Before Dishonor one. That bitch go, man. I'm sorry. I I'll cut those matches on. Couple of hills have eyes looking (laughs) over. Never mind. Death warming up the penalty box. Um, I'm chill. But yes, good quality tag team wrestling. I know there's some people that can relate to what I'm saying, but don't. Don't sleep on that on that feud. But to your point, Dub, to keep it all on on track here, there isn't anybody that they are I will have a rivalry with right now that I would want to see outside of them beating the shit out of the Young Bucks, which will never happen because booking and EVPs. But yeah, man. So so DG probably isn't gonna defend that pure title because who. Who else even wrestles the pure ty- the style that he would defend it against besides Daniel nah, Bryan? They just throw Willer Yuta back they out. They got rid there. of Jonathan Gr- Gresham. I they mean, just throw all right, Willer, Yuta Willer again. Willer Yuta out there again. I mean, and then you know, the the obvious main event on that card. Who is Dalton Castle and the boys going to be against? Who knows? Because they're not even talked about in the trios conversation for real. Right. I don't even know who they can even speculate and rust. You you bring up some good points. Like, why are they doing this? But I feel like they're doing this because they have to justify owning Ring of Honor. That's it. Long and short of it. Nothing more, nothing less. Pretty much. We own this entity, and we got to roll it out there every three months. <laughs> it's like, is that, that's it? It makes no sense. Once a quarter. Deal I, with it. Yes. Does it still, yes. do they come on fight? That's the channel they come on? No. They have no TV deal at so all. They don't even come on that's fight. That's my point. They so have no week to week television, so but they're just throwing them on pay per view. I gotta wait for my creatives to get that they shit don't on YouTube. Tour. Damn it. Their champions aren't doing shit in other promotions. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to get y'all legit money here. Y'all just gonna make me continue to pirate your product. That's terrible. Shave all you, Tony Khan. <laughs> Shave. You heard it first. You made me do this. Right, Pick exactly. You made me steal this <laughs> video that I should be paying for and watch it on YouTube. But their product's so irrelevant. YouTube don't even care. It's all here for free. So, yes. Who are these random Japanese guys that Kingston and Ortiz are wrestling on Friday? People were popping for them on, on Twitter. I'm not going to say shit. People were, people were, I bet. were <laughs> popping for them. I'm like, oh, y'all can have it because I don't know who the hell these dudes are. But... Like they, like it, they do it. this thing where they just they throw these random guys in front of you and they expect you to know 25 years of history. And I'm like, no. Like, SmackDown did this really cool thing last week. They gave us Santos versus Shinsuke in the first round of that um that World Cup tournament. And they, they highlighted that, hey, these two have faced each other before about 10 years ago in some random promotion, blah, 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 blah. And they said, oh, so they got history. But like, hey, but that was a long time ago. But these guys know each other. So this is why you should be invested. And this is why we drew this match up. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. I'm already a Nakamura fan, already a Santos fan. Didn't know they ever wrestled before. Maybe I'll go back and watch that another time. But for now, I'm all locked in on this. AEW is like, insert two Japanese guys here. Oh, this is the most exciting thing in the world. Kingston's like, I've been waiting my whole life to wrestle these guys. Your whole life. What? Yeah, man. Really? Fantasy booking. You was growing up in the in the slums of Shaolin next to Method Man, and you was thinking about uh, wrestling these two guys? Yep. yep. All right, I, I guess. It's ridiculous. I agree. That's, I mean, that's just the fantasy booking that they do there. It's not rhyme or reason. It's just, hey, you want to see this guy who's in this promotion wrestle this guy in this promotion? Because they wrestled each other 20 years ago when they were on the indies. 
Who wants to see it? <laughs> right. But they don't tell you that they wrestled each other 20 years ago in the Indies. They just expect you to know. I, it's ridiculous. I, I exactly. can't. I can't justify. And that's it. what. That's AEW's approach. It that's feels like AEW's every approach. Monday, when Tony's putting together a show, he just picks up his controller and presses Monday. start and says, "All right, hey, Wednesday morning, random exhibitions." <laughs> I hope he's yeah on a coke bench. I'm about just to say going. Wednesday morning after not being asleep since Sunday. Yeah, that's that's the way this show looks like how it's booked. <laughs> At least Dynamite does. Like he hasn't been asleep in like four days and. We gotta do this show. What will Vince do? The purple iguanas versus silver <laughs> snakes. Go. <laughs> yeah, whatever. He doesn't care. He doesn't even know what T- wrestling Tony, is. Tony, silver snakes are one of our tag teams. My name is not Tony. My name is Olmec. Right, exactly. You will right. call me Olmec. Talk to the body head. Right. If you want to talk to me, you must first address Kirk Fogg. Kirk Fogg. <laughs> <laughs> I talk like this <laughs> all the time. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. Man, I'm sorry. I, I, I had to vent my frustration. It's very fair. Well, um, I mean, you guys bring up very valid criticisms. I do want to ask, is there any way to revive AEW before it's too late? Revive? Hire some writers. Tell me a fucking story. What, QT Marshall? QT Marshall. Wow. <laughs> no. QT Marshall just got the nightmare factor. He ain't there for nothing else but to train people that's not getting trained, evidently, for the most part, if you watch <laughs> Botchamania. But this is a whole other discussion. <laughs> but um, I don't think that you're going to get that, Dub, because Tony wants to be two-time, two-time Booker of the Year. Um, I think that's the reason why. He, he's already lost that to Triple H. <laughs> well, we'll see what the PWI has to yeah. say about Tri- it. Triple H won that shit in three I, months. I'm with you. I'm with you. But that's I think that's the reason why you're not going to see the... He's third to Shawn Michaels right now, for being mm-hmm. honest. I, I agree with you, bro. Shit. If we're being really honest, Tony Khan is fourth to us. Damn. Damn, oh. Tony. You got a lot of coming back to do. What? <laughs> From how the body have fallen Damn, since last Tony. year. When you were basically just going to get yourself, because Vince was Vince. Um, yeah. I've listened to E-Ray book better episodes of Sunday Night Heat than episodes of Dynamite. Yeah. And I went to Sunday Night Heat back in 1997. I, I saw him when I quantum leaped. I saw E-Ray there. It was, I was like, E-Ray, <laughs> did you do the... I watched. The main event was Kane versus X-Pac. And I was like, where's Stone yep. Cold? <laughs> no one told me Stone Cold as a kid does not show up for Sunday no, Night Heat. Never. And I was like, shit, in Cleveland, no less. So I was like, yeah, there's no possible way Stone Cold's here. But I was excited holding up a Stone Cold sign, awaiting my my like idol to come out. Never did. Um, so, uh, like my emotional distress, BA, how can you revive <laughs> AEW? Um... Damn, they're not still dubs thunder of hiring writers, dude. I don't... Huh. I guess there needs to be more of a process in place. Um, I, jo- I go back to corporate America and how things are supposed to be done if you're trying to do jobs properly. And it all boils down to doing your job and your job only and being able to delegate and with the group of people that you trust. I don't think Tony has that group of people that you trust I think he has a bunch of guys that has his ear. I think Jericho's got his ear. I think Omega's got his ear. And I think that's the problem, is that you got guys that are actually in this booking themselves, basically, to give you opinions on things that maybe you need to have a, a bird eyes viewpoint of versus right there looking things in the face like you're getting. Yeah, level. you need... we. We need to like like to, to compare it to football. You got coaches on the sidelines. You got coaches in the box. Tony's got a bunch of coaches on the sidelines and player coaches to keep it a buck. Um, but nobody's in the box telling him things that he can't see from where he's standing on the sidelines being the head coach of this thing. So I think that if they be, think things more cohesive, that's the only thing that's going to save them, man. And, and that's really it. Outside of just the obvious of hiring writers and taking their ideas and putting them in your stories have a unit that's cohesive hey yo tk if you listen to b yeah you can go ahead and hire me process improvements what i yeah, do man i do it all the yes, time that's that's what that's that's what needs to happen um there's no it doesn't look like there's a process in place outside of him 
seeing what Kenny thinks and what Jericho thinks. That's really it. In all honesty. Well, okay. Well, guys, um, it sounds like it's very, very difficult to um, revive AEW. And I think it's going to take a lot of steps. But on the other hand, something very easy, Manscaped. Crop Reviver. Got to be the simplest thing ever for ball toner. You, you, you got to be. This is one of the things that I, I just can't even imagine. Like, I'm a person. Personally, I like going to the gym a lot. Might get a little uh, swampy down there. A couple sprays. Spritz, spritz, spritz. Let it air dry. Refresh the scrotals. <laughs> if you ever had that that issue where you're like come on you, you've been there it's like man you, you hit your squats you do all your your runs and, and your crossfit you know a dub is a crossfit champion uh you know you got you know you got the swamp sack and what better way to revive your balls but to spray on manscapes crop reviver and get those balls back to all of y'all as as dub likes to say because he's Definitely for the yes. streets. So, um, all the ladies that that love Dub's CrossFit mechanics, he's like, look, girl, I'm fresh and ready to go. Because he never knows. He doesn't have a significant other that loves him like we do. So, he has to go find <laughs> find his love out there. And he never knows. That's the, the spontaneous nature of, of his life. So, he might come home to, to some random uh, sensuality. And in those regards, you would hate to be like, Oh my gosh, I am unprepared. It's it's like, hey, you need your need your uh prophylactic <laughs> and you need your you need your toner. Got to have fresh balls and you got to have a glove to get that love. So, with that said, easily if you're interested in anything of that nature just to keep yourself fresh for your lady partner, or just throughout the day, you don't want to be like, damn, I stink, my balls, they, they're terrible. You don't want that. Go ahead, go to manscaped.com, use our promo code TERRITORY to get 20% off and free shipping. That's code TERRITORY at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping to revive those balls, shave them up, deodorize them, and anything else you need, man. Come on, Manscaped is the greatest. It, it's it's as simple as that. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Thank you. Boom. Got. Yeah. Thank you, brother. You're right. Um. Absolutely. Let me book the territory. Is always here for for yes. the people. And I think we've we've pretty much booked everything that we could book out because there is nothing left for the for the people. Um. We we got. I don't want to even. We don't want to book NXT make... level up, or yeah, no? we, if no. we have more time, we can talk some SmackDown. <laughs> uh, but we'll say that for next week. We'll say the SmackDown yeah. talk for next. We week. got next week. Let Let's make sure we hit SmackDown. We've been yeah. We've been we always start at the beginning of the always week. Always day before. Yes. So we're gonna do that. I'm, I'm gonna make a conscious effort of that. Um, but I wanna I wanna thank you guys again. Another great pod in the bag. We're doing our thing. We're killing it. Uh. Again, Levy Book Territory is the greatest wrestling show of all time. Fuck it. We, oh, we, we, got, we got to say it now. You got to state your claim. And even, no, it's true. I'm not, I, I can't even go back on it. It's true, damn it. It's, it's damn, damn true. true. Like Kurt God said. Goddamn right. Um, but with that said, A-Dub, let the people know where they can find you. All right, guys. You guys know you can find me, you know, part of the most influential wrestling podcast of all time as well. Every Tuesday, on the brace turn up with my homie John. I don't know what BA is doing. He's like rubbing all over the NWO. BA started logo. doing bench press. He's weird. Yeah, chest is the muscles have yeah, healed. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> if you guys are looking for me, Twitter and IG, you can find me at adub1220. Hit that follow button and let me fuck up your algorithm with all this filth and wrestling talk. And yeah. Ooh. Glorious. Oh, so glorious. And uh BA. When you're not rubbing your man titties, 
let them know where the people can uh, find you. Yes, when I'm not uh, rubbing my, my man titties that have just uh, been ripped apart from bench pressing for the first time in a long time. Um, yes, you can find me running our almighty, illustrious, slowly but surely growing Twitter page at Let Me Book Pod. That's where we're most active at. Right now, since I see that Twitter is literally about to burn down, it seems from what I'm seeing on the timeline, I'm slowly preparing oh, yeah. our other avenues Let's throw as some well. Gasoline on right, that and bitch. I think Eli Eli is grabbing uh, an entire gas station's worth, from what I understand from the total Twitter <laughs> right now. So don't worry, guys. If Twitter goes away, we do have an Instagram and Facebook page. Of just straight up, let me book the territory spelled out, no spaces. Um, I'm about to start getting to work on setting those up in case the Twitter world burns down before our eyes. Um, so yeah, so when I'm not doing that, BA is back in the gym, hitting it four or five days a week with the wife. We back out here. BA don't coach no more. Whoa. So BA got to get his, his... With the wife? I don't think we need to know your well, sexual... Well, your well. sexual <laughs> Hitting it five days a week. Hey man, when you, <laughs> Good for when you, you sweat, when you're sweaty man. already... Right. You just, you just like E Ray say, you just grab that crop reviver and you go to work. But yes, um, hey. but yes, um, back in the gym and all that fun Yo, stuff. Those balls yes. are fresh. Um, and yeah, and, and just yeah. couldn't even tell. I've been just, to the gym, just baby. getting our influence game on. But that's all I got, though, as far as what I'm doing. What about you, E Ray? Awesome, awesome. Uh, well, guys, when I am not here with my my illustrious co hosts at Let Me Book the Territory, you can also find me pretty much each and every Saturday at uh, Inaudible Ruckus podcast. We are doing the things with Producer Low. We're making it happen. Uh, great episode. The last episode was fantastic. Uh, we got to really talk about the ins and outs of uh, the Kyrie Irving situation and so many other things that could probably get us in trouble. But hey, we're, we dare to go there and have a good conversation. Also, you can find me on Instagram at E underscore R-A-Y underscore the bad guy. Uh, just retweeting and uh, oh, not retweeting, but Instagramming random things, putting on my story of like classic movies I like to watch. We're out of the spooky season, but we still in Scorpio season. So I uh, decided to throw on the old classic for my girl and we watched Kings of New York. Fantastic movie. Lots of old old uh, iconic characters and uh, actors that you see in there that you won't know. So if you've never seen it, go watch that. It'll blow your mind. If you have seen it, go revisit a classic. Uh, other than that, you can find me at Twitter at E underscore R-A-Y, the hipster. Uh, talking about random shit. Mostly wrestling, but uh, some filth slides in there occasionally. And also, we are looking to release season two of binge flicks and chill which is my movie and television review podcast you can always find that also on the in all ruckus rss feed releasing on tuesdays that'll be coming back for season two very soon until then go grab yourself a shirt at inaudible ruckus.com slash binge dash and dash chill but other than that guys as we always love to end things with, and my two Wolfpack comrades would say, because they're Omega Red, <laughs> they would say, too sweet to me when you see me, comrade. And uh, we are out. Peace. Peace.